<laughs> like, it's still very colorful, even though we're uh, dealing with metal and machinery and such. Um, it's it's um, a very colorful environment, and it's very fun to explore. And there's even beauty in the music, you know? Alright, what's done here? I could have gotten by without getting hit. Let me go ahead and reload that. Got him. Haha. <laughs> Fortunately, this is the only level in the game where the Norks have guns. Although, they're still not terribly challenging. Now, it's worth noting that uh, at the time this game came out, um, uh, there's a, a lot of, um, you know, video game witch hunting going on in, in the wake of, uh, you know, tragedies such as Columbine. Um, about, you know, video games' role in, uh, in, um, in promoting violence, you know. Uh, and we still see a little bit of that debate coming up, but it's getting harder and harder to take it seriously, right? Um, but I can remember as a result, like, uh, you know, if a video game had guns in it, it was kind of a big deal back then. It was, it was, uh, you know, kind of on the chopping block, as it were, for um, activists who were, were uh, against violence in video games. Um, so I, part of me wonders if they only added guns to one level just, just to be safe, you know? <laughs> Like, uh, they were worried if they added them in any more levels, they would lose the E for Everyone rating. Thank you for releasing me. Because I, I, and I almost think they would have, too. Um, if we had seen, uh, you know, automatic uh, gun wielding norks uh, in earlier levels. Um, I think we would be looking at like you know an E10 and up, or uh, even a teen rating for the time period that this came out. You know, because it was just uh, um, a, a very frightening time in, in in the public eye for video games. So it looks like these norks are looting quite a lot. They're just dumping their lava into the ocean. With uh, no regard for the local wildlife, it's a real shame. Now this level makes me question, um, like, uh, like what what is the purpose of this world here? You know, and how much of it is Nasty's doing versus the dragons doing? You know, uh, Nasty Nork was a, a nasty character, you know, obviously, so they banished him to. Um, to this world, right? And they just left him here. And they kind of forgot about him. Um, and so, I, I don't know. I, I think that the architecture we're seeing here kind of implies that this is a... Uh, oh, we got a ramp here. Interesting. And lower the drawbridge. I think that the... Uh, this industrialization that we're seeing is really the result of, uh, of the Norks, you know, kind of taking over and, and, and building this, this area into their little army, you know? Be on the lookout for Nort Commandos, Spyro. They better be on the lookout for me. This is very odd, because we definitely have rescued all these dragons before. Um, we're reusing the, the names and the models, but not the voices. That's, that's, that's very strange. Um, I wonder why they did that. Because it would, be, it would be a relatively feat, I would think. Like, I mean, if you're going to go through the trouble of recording um, new voiceovers, you know, for these dragons, uh, why not just, you know, give them a separate name and, um, I mean, heck, you could even use the same model, but give them a different name and nobody would notice, you know? It's cool that we have this little uh, waterfall over here, a lava ball, as it were. I just want to explore it. Uh, Alright, so let's use the supercharged jar panage, huh? Whee! <laughs> Spray and pray, huh? Didn't work out too well for you. So yeah, we, we see um, in these environments everything, like I said, it's it's very um, industrial, very grimy, very clingy. Um, we don't see any of those elements of, uh, you know, the, the dragon architecture where things are, you know, kind of have a medieval feel to them 
where there is, uh, I shouldn't have glided yet. I think there's actually something around here that I can look at. Yes, maybe if I go along the edges of the wall here. Anything over here? Nothing over here. What are we here? Aha! Chest! This. I don't know if I've ever been over here before. Dang it. This might not be a space that you're supposed to go, but it's just a place that you can, just for fun, you know? Interesting. Uh, if you look over here to the, uh, to the left, you'll see there's a lighthouse, and it actually has a light going around it. I've never noticed that until this playthrough. Again, just breathing detail into every part of the world. Beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, we don't see any of those uh, medieval design elements. We don't see any gems worked in anything. Um, everything is just real harsh and metallic, you know? Now, I wonder... If I put the, the gate down be able to get over there. I, I think you have to use a supercharge in order to hit that uh, that unbreakable container. I think that the, you're supposed to have the gate down, otherwise you'll uh, fly up and hit the ceiling. Give it a shot. You gotta be careful here. Haha! <laughs> made it! Alright! It's a little worried I wouldn't be able to do that. At least not on the first try. So I guess, like, I, if you're really to read something into it, I don't, I don't think you're meant to, but um, you have this almost kind of parallel for Hitler here, where the dragon just, like, took somebody that uh, was an uncouth character and just kind of just let him go off and do whatever he wanted to in his own little region of the world, you know? And they thought that nothing bad was going to happen as a result of that, you know? <laughs> um, now obviously something very bad did happen. We have, we have a Nork invasion. I get all the gyms in here. Uh, looks like I've got two directions I can go. Can't really do anything out here. I love how the water um, is rendered here. Like how we can see almost a reflection in the water. We have the, um, any place that something drops into it, you can see that they paint on those little ripples around the edge, showing the edge there, instead of just having it go straight down into the, into the lake. And like I said, we can see the little reflections underneath. It's really cool. Guys got grenades. Grenades of days. Actually, make the same the little norks at least uh, with the guns. Make the same noise when you kill them as those uh, those yellow norks from the Peacekeepers world. That bleh, sacre bleh. Lava River going into the water here. Again, I like to point out just like the amount of detail they worked in. They, they actually animated the lava flows flowing into the water. They could have just had just an orange block there and we would have gotten the message, you know? How oh, that guy hit me from here? Oh man, he's beating me up. Let's reload real quick. Wow, I am not doing too well. Did I get all the gems over here? No, I didn't. Gotcha. Haha. <laughs> gotcha both. <laughs> Alright. Feels like we're going to be missing some gems here. Maybe not. Maybe I'll have a bunch of yellow gems here. I'll make up for it. Alright, 400 out of 400. Let's do it. Now we're ready to face the final boss of the game, Ganasty Ganork.
make sure we're all healed up. Now you'll notice we've got, uh, you know, um, Nork Cove, we've got Twilight Harbor over here. Here we have Nasty Nork's portal. But you'll notice that there's a, that dragon head right there that's not opened up yet. Hmm. What could that mean, huh? Could that be a secret level, perhaps? Oh, we'll just have to find out once we defeat Nasty. There we go. 200 out of 200. Check our inventory real quick. Yep. 79 out of 80 dragons rescued. Here we go. The final showdown. Alright, so here we have Nasty. There's not really anything we can do to him. He's up there, he's just laughing at us. Alright, so let's uh let's run around, collect some gems, and see if we can find out what's going on. It's so interesting to me the way that they do boss fights in this game, that uh, a boss fight isn't really so much of a confrontation as just an extra level, you know? Um, and oh hey, there happens to be a boss there, you know? Um, I think it's very interesting. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of discussion about what constitutes a boss fight, what constitutes a, a good boss fight, um, and whether video games even need boss fights. Um, and it, I, I think those are all, uh, you know, questions that are, are best left as questions, you know, and, and we should experiment and find out and, and see what works best. Um, but uh, I, I like that, that Spyro kind of plays with that formula a little bit. We don't have boss fights in the way of, of you know, traditional boss fights. Um, we have boss fights as a, uh, as a as an exploration of, of game mechanics. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. And it's interesting to note that um, there we go. So I can use this key. I don't think I can use that on Nasty's door yet. I think I have to use it on this door. You know that that's something that uh, that can be frustrating about boss fights is when you go an entire game playing a certain style, especially RPGs are very fond of this, you know, um, gotta be careful here, uh, where you'll, you'll play the entire game dispatching moves a certain style, and then you'll, um, end up facing a boss and it's something entirely different, you know, um, or, or, you know, uh, when, uh, there's the other problem too, just a, a boss being nothing but just a glorified regular mob, you know, um, 